Uh, welcome to the Data Vijay channel. Uh, this is Shekhar and I am a data scientist. So in this particular tutorial, uh, we are going to develop a machine learning model uh, which can predict the uh, which can predict the heart disease, right? So here we are going to build a classification model basically uh, which um, gives us the whether the person is having a heart disease or not based on the different attributes of that particular person okay so let's get started so uh, the first step is yes we have to import the required libraries here so i'm importing here numpy pandas matplotlib seaborn these things okay run this now second thing is uh, the second step is we have to collect the data means load the data and we have to start processing the data so for that i just uh, i am having this data hard disk data in this csv file so i am using a pd.read_csv and storing the data into hard data variable is nothing but a data frame okay so i can print a first five rows okay so you can see that there are columns okay so let let me check what is the size of the columns so i will do shape so you can say that that there are 14 columns and 303 three uh, rows okay now these are the columns okay so we know that um uh, heart data dot columns gives you the list of columns okay now uh, we need to understand what is the significance of each column okay the first age is same sex uh, is gender cp is chest pin type so there are, there are four values under this there is a uh, this um, next variable is there which can give you the resting blood pressure uh, then um, chol is there chol that gives you a serum cholesterol in mg per dl then fes gives you fasting sugar level okay uh, then uh, rest ecg the resting um, electrocardiographic results uh, then um, thalach so thalach is maximum heart rate achieved then EXANG that is the exercise induced angina then old peak old peak is ST depression induced by the exercise related to rest then this is the slope um, uh, of peak exercise ST segment CA CA is coronal artery disease um, okay and uh, last uh, last one is uh, this thing thal thal is the thallium stress results okay so and finally it's a target so target is basically 0101 here values okay so these are the uh, the 13 columns which uh, are the attributes of the data set okay so already we have seen the last uh, five columns uh, poly rows we can display this is the shape and we need to understand what is the information about the data so you can see that a 303 rows and all columns are almost a numerical one that is integer and there is a floating values okay okay fine uh, so we'll check the missing values are there uh, dot is null dot sum uh, here we can't see any missing values here so yes data is cleaned one then we'll check whether there is any duplicate values are there so he heart heart data and here heart underscore data dot duplicated duplicated and we'll check okay so one uh, uh, there is a one duplicate records is available here so we can remove that also so how to remove that the heart data dot drop duplicated duplicates drop duplicates and here i'll put in in place uh, equal to true so 
from the existing data it will delete this okay then again we have to check the shape of the data so that uh, dot shape here you can say it's a 302 now okay that's fine so now we have to uh, all the columns are the numerical ones so then we'll check the statistical measure of the data so statistical measures are nothing but the mean standard deviation minimum value 25th percentile 50 percentile 75th percentiles and maximum okay so this is uh, about the the each columns uh, statistical measures okay now the target variable count values so one means yes it is a defective heart means the person with the heart disease and zero means it's a healthy heart right so this is one uh, again we will check whether there is any correlation among these variables are present in the data or not okay and for that what i'll do it's a heart data dot core it will give you the correlation so uh, from this you can easily understand if there is a data which is uh, correlated with each other okay so i think uh, i can't see any data which is highly correlated here so our data is fine so if you want to check it into a heat map then sns dot heat map you can do and put this correlation matrix here core i'll put it into a variable so that i can put it here the core okay and i'll do a not equal to true so i'll get the a nice uh, heat a map of these values okay so i can't see anything any highly correlated values here so uh, yes it's fine then okay uh, so you can change the size of this graph so that you can easily um, uh, you can see these values right okay uh, so uh, we will check which are the uh, the the features which are impacting more on the target variable so for that what i'll do i'll do first this thing uh, i'll show you here and this is our df so you can see this is the df we are getting that is what i did here i am group by using the group by function and group by by using target and doing the the mean of all the values so i get the district difference so i want the further difference between these cases so what i will do i will take a, a percentage difference between these two values so that i can understand which uh, which is uh, which variables are having a maximum difference so you can see that um, uh, the maximum difference is available with us is here 48%, 59%, 45%, 54%. So these values actually, these values are most impo impacting on the target variables. Okay, one is CP, second one is um, X, exchange, then third one is the old peak and CA right so yes uh, then we have to split the data into uh, into features and the target so target is last column that is the target where we can say the person is having this is one zero or one okay and uh, rest of all columns are the the feature columns okay so when you run this you can check uh, the x x data and the y is the target data we have separated it now the next thing is we have to split the data into training and testing so for that we have to import this uh, train test split model from model selection uh, from sklearn so i'm creating here the four variables x train x test y train y test and using a train test split i'm providing the x value y value test size stratify y and random state is 2 so here i am using a 20% test data and 80% training data okay fine now you can check what is the uh, just, uh, so this is the original shape this is the x train value and this is the x test data right so training is this and testing is this the next thing is um, 
feature scaling. So why feature scaling is required? Because we know that the heart data dot head, when you do this, sorry, my bad. Okay, you can see uh, these, these variables are having a different uh, scales. The age is having different scale. This is having different scale. So we have to bring them on the same scale. Okay, so for that we are using a standard scaler here. I'm using a standard scaler. Then the I'm creating a the object of standard scaler here, and I'm transforming the extend data and extrix data. So uh, standard scaler fit underscore transform extend and dot um, a scale a standard scalar dot transform extrust. Okay. Now yes, um, the now th our data is um, good and you can visualize the data for extrain. Now that is transformed. You can see means uh, that that value we have standardized, right? You can see. Okay. Yes. Fine. Okay. So next thing is we have to build the model. So initially we will build the logistic regression model. So first what I'll do, so I'll import the logistic regression from the linear model and then I'll create the object of logistic regression that is model. And I'm training this model by using a dot fit, X train standardize and Y train. Okay. Yes, now model is uh, um, uh, trained and the model is ready for the prediction. So for that, um, we have to evaluate the model first. Okay, first we have to do the prediction. So here, what we uh, we are doing here, so extend predictions we are making here. So it will predict the extend for extend. You can see these are the predictions for hex chain and x test predictions. You can see, okay, here x train predictions. Okay, so why this is important because we need to calculate the, the training accuracy and the testing accuracy both. So, for that, uh, we need to find out, uh, uh, so we need to import the accuracy score from sklearn dot matrix so yes then we have to predict the model model dot predict x train so already we know and then we have to check the accuracy so accuracy score equal to x train predictions which we are used and y train okay and then we have to print the accuracy this so you can see that the the training accuracy is 83 percent almost and uh, testing accuracy we have to check so testing accuracy is 78 okay so uh, why this training and testing needs to be checked because we have to check whether your model is overfitting or not so if the training um, yes always training accuracy is more and the testing accuracy is less so training accuracy um, uh, is greater and testing accuracy is less in that case we can say that the model is overfitting so to avoid that we have to compare these two values now these values are closer one okay so uh, yes our model is uh, uh, working fine here okay so uh, with this model we can uh, we can do some customized predictions here so we are having the data with us uh, with all the values of these uh, columns different columns okay so yes okay now what i'll do i'll convert this data into a an, uh, numpy array so simply by np dot as array and input data so it will create an array now we have to reshape that array to one minus one okay then next one we have to scale this because we have to use the scaled part of data so standard scalar dot fit underscore transform so it will scale the data and then uh, we are putting that scaled input data into that predict so model dot predict so it will give you prediction if that prediction is zero then we can say that the person does not have the heart disease and if it is uh, one means person has a 
hard disk search. We'll run this, and what it's showing. So if the person is having these attributes, then yes, from this model um, output, uh, the model is saying the person has a hard disk. Okay, yes. Now this is about the logistic regression. Now we have to build uh, the multiple models by using a decision tree, random forest, k nearest, key uh, key uh, neighbors, um, k nearest neighbor, then SVC and Gaussian neighbors. Near okay. So when you run this, and here you have to create the object of each model. So all the models are ready. Now I am creating here the model list. Okay, then I'm up, uh, creating a list of accuracy and model name. So for model in the model list, so model I'm fitting it to X train and Y train, and I'm uh, creating a predictions and I'm checking the accuracy of that particular model, and I'm appending this accuracy in the accuracy list, and finally I'm appending the model name. Okay, run this. Yes. Um, uh, now uh, the all the ac uh, accuracies of the models are ready now you can see that uh, i'm creating here the model and the accuracy these two column and uh, creating a new data frame model accuracy okay so here uh, i am getting a, a decision tree with maximum accuracy and uh, yes the key nearest neighbor is also having good accuracy gaussian is also there so, but uh, we need to check uh, by using a cross validation cross validation means we are splitting the data into a number of folds like uh, three four five okay so five folds and we are checking for each fold what is the accuracy of that particular model so that uh, we can um, carry out the validation uh, of the accuracy okay so here uh, what i am doing i am uh, using the same thing but um, uh, but i am using here uh, the cross val score okay so cross val score will take a argument as a model so these are the models one by one i am putting them features is x labels are y then scoring is the accuracy and cv is cross validation is five so five folds we have to do that and finally it will create a five accuracies so we have to take the mean of this okay and that mean we have to append it into a accuracy list okay and the model also so i'll run this and finally i am creating again accuracy in the model data data frame here by using these two lists and you can see that uh, you can see that with the cross val score uh, the logistic regression is having a, a good accuracy or the best accuracy so yes already we have used the logistic regression so in this our case the the best model the best model is model is logistic logistic regression logistic regression with accuracy of accuracy of almost 83% 83% okay 83% so uh, this is all about developing a machine learning model for predicting the heart disease so if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, thanks for watching.